All right, homeschool moms, I know, I know you have gotten that dreaded question before. It's that question that scares every homeschool parent. It's the one that makes you quiver in your Crocs, drop your Stanley cup, look at your kids and panic because you have no idea how to answer it. When am I going to use this in real life? Now, granted, that question usually comes about when your kid is diagramming a sentence or working on a calculus problem. And most of us have a really hard time coming up with a valid answer. But I'm happy to tell you that there is a subject that I feel really passionately about that I feel is important for every student to learn about, whether they're a homeschool student or a public school or a private school student, that every student should learn about at some point in their education. And it is a subject to where you can answer back to your student 100% honestly, you will use this information every single day that you are alive. And that subject is anatomy and physiology. Today I wanna to talk to you about why I feel it is so important for us to teach this to our students at some point during their homeschool education and the curriculum that we've chosen to use in our homeschool to teach it, why I chose it, and a little bit about that curriculum. So let's dive right on in. So before making this video, I thought it would be interesting to look up some studies and see how much people actually knew about their bodies and about their health. And the results, were a bit disturbing. A study done in Australia found that 92% of those surveyed didn't understand the difference between a viral infection and a bacterial infection. 73% of adult Americans surveyed didn't understand what the function of most of the organs in their body were. And then one that really got to me was on health literacy. A 2019 study found 36% of Americans have a low health literacy rate and only 12% were considered proficient. Now, as a registered nurse, a huge part of my job is education. Every day I'm out seeing people and a large part of the time I spend with them is spent explaining how it is their body works, why it's responding the way it does, why are we recommending certain things and how are those things going to impact their bodies? Because most of the patients I see, they just don't know. And it doesn't matter if I'm talking to a 70 year old patient or a 15 year old patient, they just don't understand because they didn't study it. Now you might say, my kid's not going into a health field. Do they really need to understand this? They probably should know this because their body is the one and only body that they get. And so much of the things that affect us as middle age and older adults are things that we actually need to start paying attention to and doing things about in our teens and our early 20s. And if we don't educate and arm our kids with this information, how are they supposed to make informed decisions about their health? We need to make sure that we're giving them as much information as possible or that's age appropriate for them, or at least giving them an introduction and encouraging them to go and learn more. And that is one of the many reasons why this is such an important subject to cover. Now in our home school, I have two high schoolers and we are going to be using a high school level anatomy and physiology course with both of my teens. And the course that I've chosen to use is from Guest Hollow. It's their anatomy and physiology course. Now, if you have younger students, I do wanna mention that they do have a junior version of this course that is meant for younger students. And it's a great way to introduce this information to them, again, in an age appropriate way. But if you have a high school age student, I'm gonna strongly encourage you to take a look at this curriculum. I'm gonna show you some of the components of it and why it is I'm choosing to use this with my kids. Now, if you've been a long time viewer, you've heard me talk about guest hollow courses in previous videos, how they work, and you've even seen me show different curriculum that we use. But for those of you who are new, let me explain just a little bit about what makes guest hollow courses different. First of all, they are not traditional curriculum where you have a textbook and like a stack of worksheets and tests your kid reads, they take the test, and then that course is done. Instead, what they try to do is bring together a rich mix of resources for you, the parent, to use and choose from. And you can pick and choose from this big supply of options, the things that are gonna work best for your student. If you have a student who is a strong reader, they have an amazing book list included with each curriculum. And they usually will have one or two books that they consider to be the spine books of the course, those that are the most important for that course. And then there will be other books that are recommended. And a lot of times these are topical books that will focus in on one portion of that course and you might read it over the course of a couple of weeks, but it gives amazing in-depth information on that part that you are studying. Now, if you have a student who maybe 
doesn't enjoy reading as much or has a harder time, they'll have recommendations on books that are a little more visual based, maybe ones that have more in terms of pictures and diagrams, but they also include a whole bunch of different free video options. And then for those who like the hands-on activities, there are all kinds of activities included as well. I'm gonna tell you about a few of those that are gonna be included in the anatomy course. Now, while some guest hollow curriculums do include an online textbook as one of the book choices, this one doesn't have an online textbook. Instead, it has what it calls the spine book, the most important book that you can get for this curriculum. And for this one, it is called Anatomy and Physiology Made Incredibly Easy. Now, for those of you who have a reluctant reader or a student who might not be a strong reader, there is an alternative version of this book called Anatomy and Physiology Made Incredibly Visual. It is included in the schedule along with this book as well. So you can choose either or as an option. Now, while I haven't purchased all of the books for this course yet, I did start picking up a few of them. I've got a book called Gulp, The Cartoon Guide to Genetics, Blood and Guts, a working guide to your own insides. The Gift of Fear and other survival signals that protect us from violence. And Chew on This. And I've just had a chance to start flipping through some of these books. I can't wait to actually read along with my students as they go through this course and see what information I can learn. Even as somebody who's worked in the healthcare field for over a decade and then worked in the science field before that, it's just gonna be really interesting to see what information that they are learning and to go along with them on that journey. As previously mentioned, there are also a whole bunch of links to free videos included in the curriculum. Now, many of them are gonna be YouTube videos, but there's also links to full-length TV show episodes and movies that are pertinent to the topic being discussed on that given week. But let's talk about hands-on activities, because with every science course, the hands-on stuff is always the most fun. Now, one of the things that they recommend that you get your hands on is a microscope and a particular set of microscope slides. These are slides that show different body cells and different body tissues. Now, maybe you're thinking, I can't afford to buy a microscope or, you know, that's just not something that we want to invest in right now. Well, have no fear. A lot of these slides you can find examples of online. There are YouTube channels out there where people are actually recording what they're seeing through a microscope and you can see a real example right there or you can find images of it. In all honesty, we weren't sure we were gonna need a microscope after both my kids finished biology and we gave ours away to another homeschooling family. Am I gonna buy another one? Probably not. So we will be using the YouTube video options and online resources in order for my kids to be able to see examples of these slides as we get to them in the schedule. Let me give you a few other examples straight from the schedule itself. Making an edible model of DNA, dissecting a bone, making a model of how the arm works, muscle tendon and joint dissection using a chicken leg, knee reflexes and limb levitation, vision tricks, making a sound scope, growing mold, testing if toothpaste actually kills bacteria, and does soap really work? So there's all kinds of really cool things included on here. The nice part is that the information on what you're gonna need for each one is listed right there in the curriculum for you. And most of them involve things that you can already find at home or things you can easily get at the grocery store. Now, something interesting to note is that they do include optional dissections. Now, maybe the thought of a dissection makes you squeamish. And if that's the case, don't do them, that's okay. But if you have a student who's really interested in that, or if you have a student who knows they're gonna go into a health field, let me tell you from experience, you're not getting out of doing dissections at some point in your education. You're gonna do it in a biology course, or you're gonna do it in an anatomy course in college. So if you're feeling a little squeamish, but you wanna go into a health field, it is better to get over that at home, where you can make all of the sounds you want while doing it, and nobody's gonna think twice about it. But if you're not going into a health field and you don't feel comfortable doing a dissection, absolutely skip them. But the ones that are included are things like a kidney, a cow's eye, and a heart. And they give you the links to where you can find the different things you might need for a dissection. Personally, I feel like they're really cool. I feel like there's nothing different than actually seeing that organ and what it actually looks like because illustrations in book just never show things exactly how they're going to look in real life. But it is a really cool addition to that. Now let's talk about some of the other things that are covered in this curriculum. There are so many different topics that your student is going to be diving into over the course of the year. From cells and tissues to DNA and genetics to hematology and blood typing, nothing is skimped over in this course. 
Students will be introduced to the brain, the different portions of it and what they control. They'll learn about all of the different body senses, the eye and how it functions, the ear and how sound is heard and interpreted by our brain. They'll learn about the muscular system, the skeletal system. A good portion is spent on the digestive tract, how it is that our food is taken in, processed, and used by the body. They'll also learn about the heart and lungs and the importance of keeping our cardiovascular system healthy. Time is spent also talking about nutrition. What are the things that our body needs in order to stay healthy and where can we get those things from? Different diseases are also discussed. When talking about the endocrine system, they'll learn about diabetes, how that impacts the body and how it can be prevented. They'll also get introduced to viruses, bacteria, parasites, and the different types of diseases and illnesses they can cause, and how exactly our immune system tries to fight off these different things. Now that's already a lot of information that's being covered in this course over the year, but you might be wondering, are there any sensitive subjects being covered? Yes, there are. The last couple weeks of the curriculum, there are topics including the male and female reproductive system, pregnancy, STDs, family planning, drugs, and safety and relationships that are addressed. Now, you could of course choose to skip those weeks if you really don't wanna cover them with your student or if you don't feel like your student is ready to go over them. You can also pick and choose, again, from the different book options, the different videos, the different reading selections on the things that you feel are most appropriate to go over with your student. And as a parent, I feel much more comfortable going over these subjects, regardless of whether or not they feel weird to teach my kids. I feel better knowing that I'm giving them that information, that I am creating a space where they can ask me questions honestly, and I will give them honest answers now. Because that means if something comes about in the future, if they are wondering about something, or if they have a concern about a relationship, or or a concern even about a friend and they're not sure what to do, they know that I am an, I have an open door, that they can come to me, that they can talk to me. And that is just, that's the reason why I'm teaching this to my kids because I don't want somebody that doesn't know them, that doesn't love them, that doesn't have their best interests at heart being the one to teach that to them. So do know that this is included in the curriculum for you. It is up to you if you choose to use it, but I really hope that you will. Okay, now that I'm off my soapbox, let me give you a quick recap of all of this. When you purchase the anatomy and physiology curriculum, you get a download of what they call the schedule. So the schedule is going to give you the full book list. It's going to have all of the books ranked in terms of how important they are to the overall curriculum. You definitely want to make sure you get books that are ranked number one, including the spine textbook. You're also going to get a weekly breakdown over 35 weeks of what to read on what days. And again, you can flex and move this depending on how your schedule works, how quickly your student reads and what you're including. You're gonna have the videos linked right there on the schedule for you as well. They are gonna go along with the topic for that given week. You're going to have the hands-on activities. There will be links to show you how to do those different activities online or printables for you or links to where you can purchase the things that you need to have for it. It's all built in there for you. There are no tests, there are no quizzes, there are no workbook pages or worksheets, but you can choose to pull different things in. Some of the links will take you to different types of activities, things you can print out and have your student do. Within the anatomy and physiology spine book, there are optional quizzes, there's even an end of the year test. I feel like this is a wonderful opportunity to consider doing a narration journal with your student. A narration journal is simply a way for them to sit there and write down their thoughts as they're going through the curriculum that day. Write down the things that they thought were most interesting. Add in drawings and diagrams. If your student loves to draw, have them diagram some of the things that they're learning about. Do some labeling, focus in on different parts of it. Have them write a little bit of the key things that they feel are important or the things that stuck with them the most. Maybe throw in a couple of questions in there, things that you want to prompt them to think more deeply about. You could also give them a grade for participating in the different activities, doing the experiments and the hands-on things, doing the dissections. You can really formulate this course however you choose and give it a grade however it is you choose. So my key point in all this is that it's so important for everyone to understand their bodies, not just if you're gonna become a doctor. I'm Dr. Gregory House, you can call me Greg. Or a mad scientist. It's alive! But 
we only get one. We get one body. And the longevity and quality of our life is largely dependent on how well we understand how our bodies function and how the things that we do impact our overall health. So as parents, I feel like it's our responsibility to make sure that we're giving our kids this information, that we're helping them to understand it, and that we're creating an environment where if they have questions in the future, they feel like they can come to us and they can ask them. And I really love this guest hollow curriculum. I feel like it's going to be a wonderful addition in our homeschool, and it's going to give my kids a fantastic introduction to anatomy and physiology. I wish you guys all the very best. If you have any follow-up questions about Guest Hollow or Guest Hollow curriculum or anything else that we're using in our homeschool, please feel free to leave a comment down below in the description box. I also will link my playlist down below if you want to check them out for more information about different curriculum and subjects that we are studying in our homeschool. I am going to go start this new book. Chew on this, everything I didn't want to know about fast food, which will give me one more reason to continue avoiding McDonald's. Thanks so much, everybody. Happy homeschooling. See you in the next video. Thank you.